Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so let's get right into today's video. I know I usually do an intro and kind of say who I am and everything, but I have tons of videos doing that. Well, tons, like four. Um, I have like a few videos explaining who I am and why I'm here, and I don't want to waste a lot of time. I love, 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 love and appreciate you guys for commenting for, because I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but when I started doing this, I didn't know if you guys were going to vibe with me, if you were going to like the energy, if I was going to be aggravating as hell or like what, right? But from what you guys have said, you guys enjoy it. And that means so much more than you guys will ever know because coming out of the situation I just came out of in prison and coming out to this different world 10 years later, it's like a big shock. And I just, I'm so touched in my heart when I read these comments. That's why I try to answer every single one and engage with you guys because I feel like I'm building this, this bond and this thing with you guys where we're starting from scratch from the beginning and you guys are here with me and hopefully this channel takes off. But right now I'm so happy with my little, you know, baby 330 subscribers and the few that I interact with like, oh, it makes me so happy. And I feel like, okay, I'm doing something right. And it's, it's propelling me and pushing me forward. So thank you guys more than you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? That's the first thing. Second thing is, this is my Christmas little background. Um, I love Christmas, I love decorating, I love all this stuff, I didn't get to do it for so many years, so I decided to sit out here in my living room today and just have this as a background, see if you guys like it. It's only temporary, I'll go back to my little corner later on, but I'm trying to like jazz that area up a little more. So um, I see that some of the big true crime YouTubers have like these fabulous backgrounds and I'm like, I feel like so inadequate and behind, but okay, I'm trying, right? So like I said, I'm going to go right into today's video. This is a girl that I did about nine months in prison with at Lowell Correctional in Ocala, Florida. I honestly did not know who she was. I knew the story. I actually saw the story on TV, and when I found out she was housed at the prison, I asked somebody, where is this girl? Because I must be walking by her every day and I literally have no clue who she is because as you guys will see in the pictures of her, she's an attractive young lady and the girl that I saw, you know, on TV is not anybody I was seeing in the prison. So I was like, where the hell is this chick? And when they pointed her out, I was like, skirt, what? Like that is not the same girl, but it was. So, okay. Moving right along, we are going to jump in today and go to a little town called Boynton Beach, Florida, where we are going to talk about Michael DiPolito, also known as Mike, and Dahlia Muhammad, who is a very attractive young lady who really decided to capitalize early on in life on her looks, okay? Dahlia wanted a lavish lifestyle. She wanted to be spoiled, waited on hand and foot, and wanted everything just given to her on a platinum platter without having to work for it. And she realized, you know what? Men will give this stuff up if I just act like I like them and finesse the situation, and that's what she did. So first, we are going to talk about Mike DiPolito. Michael DiPolito was convicted in 2001. He was convicted of organizing this fraud operation and he was found guilty and took a plea deal of seven months in the county jail and then 28 years of probation. Now, usually one of two things happens. When you get convicted of a crime, you usually get a lengthy prison sentence and then no probation or very short probation after or you get a short prison or jail sentence and then you get a long probation term. It's just common knowledge in crimes in general but particularly organized crimes when there's more than one person arrested and there's several people being charged with that specific crime or that specific scheme. There is common knowledge that People will tell on each other and the ones that tell more will actually get the lighter sentences. So the fact that Michael was convicted of heading this, you know, this scheme, this organized fraud, the fact that he was convicted of heading that up and only got seven months but 28 years of probation kind of left some people a little bitter. Right? So 
There was a little bit of, you know, saltiness about that situation, but he went on with his life and he was on probation for eight years of the 28 with no problems, no hiccups, no violations, no nothing. And by all accounts, it seemed like he had really turned his life around, y'all. Like it seemed like it was a wake up call for him, y'all. He was much younger when it happened. It was the first time that he got busted. And even though he probably did a lot more than he got busted for, it seemed like, okay, you know, he learned his lesson. He turned that thing around and he did something good with his life and he's good now, right? So he was making good money, he was an entrepreneur and he seemed to really have no issues with his probation and his probation officers had gotten to know him and he was known to be a pretty straight laced guy that had really started to do the right thing and walk the straight and narrow, okay? So he is home hanging out one day, it's October 4th, 2009, and his wife of seven years is out of town. Now, I don't know what kind of relationship he had with his wife at that current moment, but I assume it probably wasn't all that great because of what I'm about to say in a few minutes, okay? While his wife was out of town, Mike decided that he wanted some company, and he went to an online... Uh, come for the night type of friend dating service but really it was low-key an escort service okay so he calls his escort service and half an hour later Dahlia Muhammad knocks on his door now when Dahlia Muhammad knocks on his door he is smitten he thinks she is fine as wine and he just likes her immediately there's an attraction there's an attraction on her end him and Dahlia are both very you know materialistic people who like nice things and who you know like to present themselves very well put together very well kept just just kind of vain right and there's nothing wrong with that I mean there's nothing wrong with wanting to look and keep yourself up at all but there is something wrong when the means to that end is by screwing other people over, which is what Dahlia is used to doing. So he sees Dahlia, Dahlia comes in, they are just having a great time that night and they decide they're going to start dating. So two weeks after they start dating, which is after the night they first met, 38 year old Michael decides that he's going to file for divorce from his wife of seven years, big mistake Michael, and be with 26 year old Dahlia Muhammad. After the divorce is finalized, five days later, five days guys, Michael proposes to Dahlia with a $20,000 engagement ring. And of course she happily obliges, right? So they're engaged, ex-wife is out, new wife is in, they get married, everything's great, and they've only known each other a few months at this point, okay? This whole charade does not even last a full year from beginning to end. Now, when he proposes Dahlia, she thinks, yes, you know, I've hit the lottery, I've hit the ATM machine, I'm golden, right? But as we all know, greed is never, never satisfied. Like, no matter how much you get or how much you think you want, you always want more and more and more and more. And that's what happened with Dahlia. So Dahlia and Mike get married on February 2nd. And let me tell y'all, this Dahlia chick, the new D Miss Dahlia DiPolito now, she was so over the top with her PDA on Michael and her admiration and adoration of him that friends say that sometimes it made them uncomfortably sick. Like she was so all over him and praising him. I mean, she was laying it on thick y'all. She was getting those hooks and she was getting them deep. She was setting him up for the kill. Like she was literally setting him up for the kill. So she was all over him, just making him feel like he had won the lottery, like he was her king and like life was going to be great. They were going to ride off into the sunset together on the white horse with the fairy tale in the castle. OK, 
So now you guys remember that Mike is on probation, right? He's been on probation for about eight years at this point with absolutely no violations and no issues. So about a month into their marriage, y'all, one month into their marriage, Michael gets a knock on the front door and it's his probation officer flanked by two deputies. They say that they need to do a search of the house. Now, once you've been on probation for a while, you know how it goes, you know the routine, you know the drill. And this was a very unusual situation and Michael knew it because for him not to have any violations and not have a reason for them to come in and search, this was like, why the heck are you guys here even wasting this time or manpower? I don't know if you guys know this and I don't know if it's in every state, but in the state of Florida, you sign consenting and agreeing to be on probation when you're placed on probation. Once you sign agreeing to be placed on probation, you relinquish your right to be able to say no and consent to a search. So anytime you're on probation, you do not have the right to say no to a search and officers, any sort of law enforcement, whether it's a detective, an officer, you know, a, a motor cop, um, a probation officer, anybody at any time can search your person, which is you physically, or your property, whatever, your house, your car, whatever, without probable cause. They can come in and just say, hey, you know what? You took too long to answer the door. We're going to search. And just think about it, y'all. You're most comfortable at home. So you might leave a little, you know, cocaine residue on the table or uh, some ammunition, a bullet, you know, made of fell out on the couch and it's rolling on the floor, you know, whatever, like however it happens to people, people are comfortable at home. They let their guard down. So when officers come in and want to search, they are usually looking for guns, um, drugs, paraphernalia, or even people that shouldn't be there, like other felons or possibly like your victims or anything like that. Anyone that's not allowed to be in your house. Okay. They're looking for these things. The visits are usually impromptu. You don't know about them. They're very random. They come, you know, they can do this with a drug test as well. And it's very unlikely that if you've been on probation for eight years with no violations, it's very unlikely that you're doing wrong. Because with all of the random drug tests and all of the random visits, it's really hard to get away with things when you're on probation. So you really have no choice but to do right or go back to prison or jail very quickly, very early on, right? So... This was weird to Michael. It was also weird to the probation officer, but he was searching and he didn't say much else about it. So at this point, Michael asks his probation officer, what's going on? Why are you guys here? And not in a nasty way, but just like, you know, you know me, like you've been knowing me for a lot of years, like what's really going on? So at that point, he is presented with evidence that there have been multiple, multiple calls anonymously to him by somebody saying that Michael is selling steroids out of the house, okay? They search the house, they come up with nothing. And thank God that there were no substances found because had there been something found in that house, he would have gone back to custody, back to the jail and then to prison for at least 10 years because he had 20 years left of probation. So when you violate probation, you have to satisfy some of that probation time, at least half, if not all. So it would have been a minimum of 10 years he would have gone back to prison for if something would have been found in that house. So Michael's little antennas start going up and he's like, what the hell is going on? Like, why would somebody do that, you know? But whatever, this is one little random occurrence and who knows what it could be. So maybe it's the ex-wife and she's pissed off. Who knows what it is? But he lets it go. He, you know, stores it in his mental Rolodex and he keeps it moving. Let's keep going with life, right? He's happy. He just got married. His wife is pretty. He's enjoying her company. They seem to be happy in love. Let's go. His new wife, Dahlia, decides that she wants to suggest an impromptu little weekend vacay with Michael. You know, they're happy, they're newlyweds, like everything's great on the up and up. So she says, hey baby, let's go to Palm Beach and like spend the night there over the weekend, you know, and just have some fun. It, they, it was known basically that they were really connected because they had a lot of things in common and their relationship was very much fueled by partying, alcohol use, and a lot of wild sex, okay? I want to make a little side note here. Another thing that was very, very important in this entire case was their love for reality TV. 
Dahlia wanted to be some sort of, you know, Jersey Shore, Snooki, Kardashian type of celebrity. She wanted to be recognized, famous, rich, and have a reality show that followed her and Michael. Michael also loved Jersey Shore and that type of life. You can tell by his pictures, he's a gym tan laundry kind of guy, you know, hair spiked up with concrete glue and all of that. So they're both very heavily into reality TV. And somehow by them talking, they really thought that somewhere along the line, if they made a YouTube channel, that they would get some fame and notoriety and then be offered a television show or a reality show on one of these channels. And they really believed this. And I'm not saying it's impossible because it's very possible. We've all seen that. But this was one of their goals for the future as a couple. They really wanted to be in reality television. And that's going to play an important part later on. So I want you guys to keep that little note just in the back of your mind, okay? But nonetheless, so once they go to this little weekend vacay, they come out Sunday morning to drive home and they're met by the police. And of course, what did the police say? They got another freaking anonymous call saying that Michael was dealing drugs out of his car, the very car that they were in. Now, at this point, Michael's like, what the hell? Because we're not even at home. We're on vacation. Nobody really knows we're here, but some people do. Okay, they've been posting on social media, so anybody could have found out, and he's trying to justify all of this. But the police search the car, and again, they find absolutely nothing, right? So two more weeks go by. At this point, during these two weeks, Michael is like, okay, I really need to start paying attention because something very effed up is going on here. Two weeks pass, and Michael and Dahlia decide they want to go to a nice dinner, okay? So they go to this restaurant, and when they're coming out of the restaurant, they're met by police once a freaking gang, y'all. Once again, they're met by police. Now, at this point, it's like, what the hell is really going on? They say the same thing. They were told anonymously that Michael was dealing drugs out of the car. So they search the car. But this time, they find a little baggie of cocaine. The little baggie of cocaine is stashed in a cigarette pack inside of the car. Of course, Michael has no freaking clue what's going on here. But he becomes instantly hysterical when they cuff him. When they put him in handcuffs, he starts crying like a baby. Now, as Michael is having this full-blown meltdown, police decide to uncuff him. He tells them, hey, listen, this is what has been going on. Someone is setting me up like I really don't know what's going on, but something's going on and it's not me. And if you've ever been accused of something you honestly didn't do, it is like the worst feeling. You almost cry out of anger and frustration because it's so aggravating to know you're doing the right thing and to still be blamed for something that could get you serious time, right? So the police later testified that they basically let him go and believed everything because of the fact that his wife, Dahlia, was unemotional. She was emotionless. She didn't seem to be concerned or shed a tear. She didn't run up to them and say, you know, no, I'm with my husband every day. I don't see any evidence of this type of behavior. Nothing. She just kind of sat back in the corner looking like, hmm. So police made a little mental note of that and they believed it. They believed him. They also mentioned that the cocaine was right inside of the cigarette pack, like it wasn't hidden or anything. And they just did not feel like that was a place where a drug dealer would keep that. And even if he was selling it, it was such a small amount that it didn't really deem dealing. You know, it just maybe could have been personal or something like that. So anyways, they decided to let him go. Now, at this point, Michael is like, wait a mother freaking minute. Hmm. His antennas go up and he says, this Biosh is the only one that knew what restaurant we were going to. She planned this. I didn't even know where we were going. So he knows that since Dahlia is the only one who knows, period, nobody else, the only one that knows where they were going that night, she had to be the one to do it. Because why else would they show up there instead of at his house, right? This was like a spur of the moment dinner and she planned it. So yeah, she did it. And then he starts going back and thinking, you know what? All of this started when we got married. So 
I don't know. So he looks over at her and she's driving because, you know, he's done had a freaking meltdown. He can't even drive at this point. And basically he says, did you do this? And she becomes hysterical. All that stuff she should have been doing while he was about to go to prison for years on end, she starts doing it then. She floors it, y'all. She floors it in that car and she takes off. So Dahlia is going 190 miles an hour. And Michael's like, oh my God, I'm about to die. This crazy biosh is about to kill us. So he looks at her and he says, okay, I'm sorry. You know, it, it doesn't matter that you were the only one that had access to the car or the only one that knew where we were going or that all of this started when I met you and married you. Forget all of that. It's probably somebody that's angry with me that went to prison, you know, and it's now been released and they're bitter and they're, you know, trying to get some kind of retribution and take their revenge out on me. It's probably one of those organized crime members that I was involved with many years ago. I know it's not you, but Dahlia knows that because he said it, it's still in the back of his mind somewhere. And that is not going to work because if he thinks that she is guilty of any of that, she's not going to get what she wants. And ever since this woman laid eyes on this man and his home, she had her goals set on draining him of everything he had. But how can she drain him when he doesn't trust her, right? So she's, she's plotting. Her wheels are spinning. She's all night thinking, 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 thinking. They go home. She tries to give him some good, you know, Becky. She tries to ride him like a cowboy and all types of stuff. But she knows that he is still a little bit sketchy and worried about her okay so next morning she comes down the stairs and as he's eating breakfast she gives him the completely amazing but totally fictitious news that she's pregnant and they're going to have a baby she does this to get his mind off of all of that stuff and focus on this new family that they're going to have right she's a special kind of biosh i'm telling you Anyways, okay, we'll get there. So, Michael's now happy. He's kind of forgotten about that stuff, you know, even though it just happened. He's trying to put it out of his mind. He's trying to think maybe he's just super paranoid and taking it out on the wrong person, and now she's with child. So, he just wants to make his family work and, and have a happy life, a happily ever after, right? So, they go out that day, y'all, and they buy baby books and baby stuff, and they are just ecstatic, over the moon about this situation. But... Little Miss Dahlia, while they're buying baby books for the baby that doesn't exist and all of this other stuff, she calls an old friend named Michael Stanley. She had a thing for these Michaels, right? It's crazy, kind of weird. But anyways, she decides to reach out to an old boyfriend, client, sugar daddy, whatever the hell he was to her, named Michael Stanley. And she reaches out with this one very short and very straightforward text. Now with that one text, she's got him hook, line, and sinker. He is right back ready to do whatever she wanted. Mind you, she had drained and effed over on three separate occasions. She would go to him, use him for whatever she needed, and then drop him like a bad habit, do it again, and do it again. She had done this three times to him, and this time she called him and convinced him to call Mike, her husband Mike, and pose as an attorney. She wanted him to pose as a real estate attorney and advise him that the only way that he would be able to get off of probation and come out clear without having to pay things or without losing any of his property would be to sign his home over to his wife. Now, at this point, Michael was, because if you serve half of your probation term without any trouble, you can petition the court to get off of probation. But sometimes you could do it a little earlier if you pay all of your fees, if they know that you're not a threat to society, and all of that. However, sometimes if there are things that need to be paid, they will liquidate your assets. They will take things from you. And so in order not to lose his home, because he had a $250,000 condo, 
he was told by this fake attorney, Mr. Stanley, that if he just signed it over to his wife, Dahlia, because they had recently received marriage certificates and records because, you know, they go through all these things. And just like when you buy a car and register it, you start getting calls from the warranty department and the extended warrant and all that crap. So he was basically acting like, okay, your marriage certificate comes to, you know, our law firm. And basically we see that you're on probation. And do you know you're at risk of losing your $250,000 condo, but you could definitely not lose it and still get off of probation as long as you sign it over to your wife and then it won't be considered yours. Now, I don't know Michael personally, the husband, Mike, I don't know him personally, but if he created a whole organized scheme to defraud something and is now seven years later an entrepreneur buying and owning, not making payments, but owning outright a $250,000 condo, giving Dolly a plastic surgery, shopping sprees, a brand new Yukon Denali, having his fancy car and whatever else they have, going on these lavish vacations and trips, buying her a $20,000 wedding ring with no payments on that either. I'm going to assume with all of that evidence that he's not a really dumb guy. He's probably on the brighter side. But for some reason, when it came to this chick, he was dumb as a box of rocks, okay? Love blinded him to, to a fault because this random stranger that calls him and tells him this, he doesn't even question. He literally goes and has these papers notarized and signs the deed over to Dahlia. So after he signs the deed over, him and his pregnant wife go home and Dahlia never contacts Michael Stanley, the supposed attorney, again. She drops him like a bad habit for the fourth time. He's done what she needed him to do and she is done with him. But it wasn't enough for Dahlia that she got the deed to the home or the condo signed over to her. That wasn't enough because as her wheels started spinning, she realized, okay, it's signed over my name, but he still has to give his signature and approval to actually sell this condo. So now she's like, hmm, well, I have access to his bank. I have access to his properties, his cars, all of his money, but I cannot sell this condo and capitalize on this $250,000 paid off property without his consent, which he's not going to give. And even if he does, I'm not going to get that money in my hand. So he's got to go. He's just, he's got to go. That's it. No more to it. He's got to go. So that's when she reaches out to another ex lover, client, boyfriend, sugar daddy, whatever you want to refer to it as. But she contacts another one of her exes the very next day named Mohammed D. Shade. I hope I'm saying that correctly. My apologies if I'm not, but I think that is how you pronounce it. Now, I think she probably felt Mohammed was more fitting for the next part of her plan. Maybe she didn't think Michael had the heart to do it or whatever the case may be, but she goes ahead, chucks Mike to the trash, the attorney Mike, not her husband, and contacts Muhammad. When she contacts Muhammad, she puts on the waterworks and tells him that the new man that she married that she thought was so wonderful has been abusing her violently and repeatedly. Makes up a whole story, tries to get him to feel horrible for her, tells Muhammad that she needs to hire a hitman to take care of her husband because she cannot leave him. She's terrified of him. He will find her. He will track her down like the dog that she is because she, mm, baby, she is, she's more, she's worse than, I don't know why people refer. This is just a side note. I don't know why people refer to like dogs in a negative connotation like, oh, he's a dog girl. Leave him alone. Or, oh yeah, track them down like a dog that they are. Dogs are loyal as hell, man's best friend, and will love you through thick and thin. Way more loyal than a person. They're happy to see you every time you walk through that door and they expect nothing from you but to be fed, walked, and loved. So why dogs are referred to in a negative connotation, I'm not even gonna go down this rabbit hole because it pisses me off because I love my dog, but I'm just saying, anyway. She was the flea, she was the turd in the 
anyways, okay. So, moving right along. When she tells Muhammad that she needs to hire a hitman to take care of her husband, Mike, Muhammad neither accepts nor denies the offer. He does not really say much. He just kind of chucks it off and gives her a little chuckle and says like, okay. But thank God this man decided to go ahead and drive straight to the Boynton Beach Police Department. And when he gets there, Muhammad lays it out on the table and basically says, hey, this is what she asked me. This is what she said. This is what she's trying to do. And because she's already told me about it, I know that it probably will get done eventually. And I don't want to be responsible for knowing about this and never having spoken up because I've watched too many things on TV. I know that the people that know sometimes go to prison for like a year or two, five, whatever. And I don't want that. So this is what she did. This is what she said. This is what she wants. And this will happen eventually because she is relentless. So you guys take it and do what you like with it. But I told y'all, I'm, you know, my wash my hands of it and I'm in the clear. So they basically tell him, hey, listen, we know you're in the clear, but, you know, just to help us out because we have no other way of saying that we know this. Do you mind meeting with her one last time and only one last time to get her to really like say this on record so we can film it, have audio and really like get her, right? So Muhammad agrees and he meets with Dahlia. He meets with her again and he gets her talking. So they set up his car with cameras. They get her on audio, handing over a picture of Michael, a picture of their home, and a $3,000 cash down payment only for whomever the hitman was going to be that she did not know yet, but that Muhammad was going to take this information and this money to. And she hands that all over on tape. So they've got her. Job done. But not so. You guys know it's never that easy, right? So... Even though they had enough to charge her and get her right then to further show her intent and further make the charges stick so that she could not wiggle her way out of it on any kind of technicality or say, you know, oh, this was an ex and I was just trying to get back with him by making him feel bad for me and da 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 da. They wanted her to actually meet with the hitman and say it to him, okay? The thought was that by saying this to a complete stranger, it was very definitive because she could always say, oh, I was just trying to get back with Muhammad and I was saying all this, but I never really meant it. But if she says this to a hitman and gives him all of the same information, it hits a little different, right? It's a little different than saying it to an ex. So they set up a meeting with the hitman who was an undercover narcotics detective. And they set his car up with cameras, okay? Dahlia meets with him, and this next segment is going to be a little lengthy, but I want you guys to actually watch the entire thing because I want you guys to see what kind of sociopath narcissist this girl actually is, okay? It's very strange because by all accounts and from what I know and investigated, she comes from a good family. Her mother's a good loving woman. She didn't have a broken home. She just decided to be a, gr a greedy little biosh in her life and use her body and her face to get what she wanted instead of working like the rest of the world. And by no means am I like downing anyone for using their looks to get things, but it's one thing to use your looks to you know move ahead in life and it's another thing to use your looks to move ahead in life while screwing people over and draining them of their entire life, okay? I do not fault anybody for being attractive and using that to their advantage. Everyone who has something uses it to their advantage, whether it's a sport, whether it's a talent, whether it's a skill, whether it's a craft. If you're good at it, you do something and you capitalize. That's fine, even if it's your looks. However, when you're using that to F people over, it's not okay. It's not okay. There's, you cannot chop it up any other way. It's not okay. Okay? You don't have to step on people to get to the top. Because the same people you stepped on, you're going to see on the way down. And baby, it ain't going to be pretty. It ain't going to be pretty. So, rabbit hole, sorry. Okay, um, so basically, she meets with the hitman, and here we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't talk 
get some stuff out the way. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to do it and what exactly is going to be done. All right. And uh, I don't know if you got recommendation. You know what you want, what you know about him. Is he your husband or something? Boyfriend? Your husband? How many of you have been married? No, for real, because the thing is, you know, after I, I talked to you today, you know, this phone garbage. Okay. You won't be able to get a hold of it. Okay, I just want to make sure that, you know, it's what you want. I'm sure you want to kill this dude. Okay. Do we really have to? Oh, right. You know, it's just, I'd rather be as less, you know, what okay. I'm going to be able to. All right. Um, <clears throat> oh, I got a picture. I've got a picture of uh, the house. What are you? How soon can we get everything going? Well, that's it's, uh, up to you. Because I mean, I need to sound like this big, but like my understanding of everything was is that like, you know, I was I was going to give you what I gave you, and then that was <coughs> that was everything. Oh, I gave I <laughs> until Sorry. after the fact, and then after the fact, I guess you were going to come and like find me or whatever. I mean, I'm good for it. Like, it's not like I don't have it. No, no, I. I know not to fuck around with you, you know certain things, whatever, like, you know what I mean? Like, you obviously know where I'm at. <laughs> about Wednesday, if you want me to, right. you know what I'm saying? But I got to do my homework, you know? Right. I got to, you know, know exactly where the place is and how to get out of there, how to get in and out, you understand know what, what the neighbors want. I got to call the cops, you know, report a shooting to see how, how fast they get to that location. There's a lot of stuff I got to do. Okay. That's going to cost me a lot of money. So if we go ahead and we do it, like at the house, like how do we, how do we, how soon could you do it? I could do it Wednesday here? morning. It's going to be like I break into the house, you know, didn't think it was going to be home because everybody works in the daytime. Right. I'm going to think he's at work, but when he's not at work, then, you know, he gets two in the head. Mm -hmm. That's it, you know, I take a couple things with me, break a couple windows, make it look like a robbery that went bad, it's all over, I'm gone out of there. We're just going to be asking you questions, although they know it's going to be obvious what it is, and they already know, but, you know, they're going to ask questions, you know, because that's how they got to do it. I don't know how well you have the pressure. You understand? I don't know, you know, because I don't want... No, I'm not going to, you know, I'm a lot tougher than what I look. I know you can right. you're like, oh, what a cute little girl, whatever. You know, but oh, yeah. I'm that, not. That I'm you not are. Like, you're so yeah. beautiful. Thank you, but, but, you know, I just need to make sure everything's going to take care of. Between now and when it's done, you know, you're not going to have an option to change your mind. Even if you change your mind, you know, there's no changing, no, there's no, like, I'm determined exactly already, so I'm positive, like, 5,000% okay. sure, like, okay. around 6.30, 7 o'clock, yeah. he always walks the dog in the morning. Okay. He okay. walks the dog across, like, over where the lake is, and our door is always unlocked. I'll be in the house by 6.30, Wednesday morning, okay. 6 o'clock, you can get in. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much, and I guess. You're here for me. I'll hear from you. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. So now, little Miss Dahlia DiPolito has met with the hitman and decided that she is going to leave the house at 5.45 a.m. And because he usually walks the dog between 6.30 and 7 in the morning, she will be at the gym. And at that time, the robber will come in, break into the home, expecting nobody to be there, and shoot Michael in the head. And then Dahlia will either come home and find him or be called by the police, okay? So, Dahlia goes to the gym as planned. She's working out, you know, pumping the iron. Right after she leaves, the police knock on Mike's door. He's sleepy. He's just rolling out of bed. It's freaking not even 6 a.m. yet. He's not even gotten his coffee and the leash ready to walk the dog. And he opens the door and he is told by the police, hey, listen, you got to get dressed. You got to go. Your wife's got to hit out on you. This is the situation. We have to set up the house and the scene. We have to make it look like, you know, we you got shot and we responded to a, a burglary or robbery. And this is what we came to. And so you have to go. And he's like, wait, what? Like, huh? this doesn't make any sense. What are you guys talking about? My wife's at the gym. Like, no way. And so once he finally wraps his mind around what's going on because they show him a little clip of her tape with the hitman in the car. He's like, holy hell, like what in the actual hell is going on, right? So he hurries up and gets stressed. The police now go ahead 
and they tape the house up they make it look like a crime scene and they call little dahlia they call her on the phone and they tell her there's a situation at her home she needs to come back immediately and y'all when she comes back <laughs> talk about performance of the freaking year honey dahlia whenever you watch this when you get out of prison baby you missed your calling you missed it you missed it okay so I don't usually put clips in that are this lengthy, but you guys have to see this. Like, homegirl is something the hell else. I mean, you're watching it going, what in the literal is going on? Like, is this really happening right now? Like, you're almost embarrassed for her. But anyways, she gets the call, she rushes home, and this is what was captured. I'm Sergeant Ramsey, I'm, I'm the one that called you. Thank you for coming, I'm sorry to call you. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house, and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, he's been killed. No, 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 he's, no. he's been killed, ma'am. No, no, he's not. Listen. No, no. Try to calm down. No, Listen, no, right now what no, we, do, we need to get you to no, the station. No, we need to get you to no, our police station. I, want to see we, I can't let you in, ma'am. We have to do our job. No, if you want us to find his killer, okay? No, we need you to calm down. No, I'm gonna no, need you to go with these detectives, okay? Does he have enemies? Is there anyone that would want to hurt him? Okay, who would want to hurt him? Witnesses said they saw a black male running from him. I can't let you see him, ma'am. Ma'am, I cannot do this right now. Ma'am, I can't do it. Detective Yopi, I need you. I need you to take her to the station. I can't. Ma'am, go with these detectives. If you want to help your husband, okay? If you want to help your husband, you need to go to the station with these gentlemen and tell us everything you know about who he knows, who he's connected to. Don't worry, we've already taken care of dogs with animal control for right now. Everything's under control. And we'll take care of everything else, okay? Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's what happens, y'all. That is literally, that just literally happened. You guys really saw that right, and that actually just happened because when I was watching it, I was like, she's really doing this. Like, I'm, I'm like a little embarrassed for her right now because everybody knows what's going on, but her, her husband is very well and alive sitting somewhere and like you, joke's on you, Dahlia. <laughs> joke's on you, Biash. Like, so I'm like cringing as I'm watching this. But then I started thinking, wait a minute. How is all this filmed? Like, why are they even filming this? This is kind of weird. Like, it's filmed like it's a movie or something. Like, what is going on? Well, come to find out, the show Cops was actually filming in the Boynton Beach Police Department during the month that this was going on. You know, they were going on patrol rides and they were filming the show Cops like they always do. Well, I guess they didn't know that this was going to be as big as it was, but you know, because the police were dispatched to that scene and that location, the show Cops was out there just a rolling. So that's why everything was caught on tape. Now, I want you guys to store that in your little mental Rolodex along with the other piece of information that I gave you guys about Dahlia and Mike wanting to be reality TV stars because I'm sure you've already figured it out, two and two is four, but um, it's all gonna play a part in the trial, okay? So, little Miss Dahlia puts on this performance and after she puts on this performance, she is told that she needs to go to the police station because she needs to answer a few questions. They've got to figure out who could have possibly done this. She's still insisting she wants to see his dead body. It's like the beast wants to confirm that he's actually dead. So when she arrives at the police station, she is sat down. And you know what? I was going to explain all this, but this chick is so freaking out there with her sociopathic ways and narcissistic mindset and thinking that she's just so much smarter than every single person around her that I cannot verbalize her attitude. So I am just gonna put the clip in here and let it tell the story, okay? Watch this. The protocol that we have to do with this with your wife. We gotta advise you of your rights so you know, okay? If you don't understand any of them, you just tell me, and I'll stop and repeat. And first of all, let me just tell you, I'm sorry for your loss. I just want to see my husband, please. All right. I love my husband, but I love you too. No, no, you don't want to say no. I just want to say no. Believe me, you don't. Could you listen, please? 
Now at this point, she's going on and on and on talking about all these people that might have wanted Mike dead. Like she's literally like, oh, oh my God. But you know, he was like selling drugs, right? Oh, but you know that he had a lot of enemies because he was an organized crime, right? Oh. But you know that um, this guy that he used to deal with, yeah, he could have really done it. Mind you, the guy had no freaking involvement in this at all, but she's trying to throw him right up under the bus. So in between tears, this girl is actually like shaming and like really, really trying to put a bad taste in these detectives' mouth about her husband, who's the victim, who th she thinks is now dead. This man is supposedly laying with two slugs in the side of his head in a pool of blood, dead, murdered in his home because of you. But you are you have the audacity to sit there and down talk him. Oh, he had this horrendous past. Like, bitch, they already know he did all this stuff. He's on probation. Like, shed some new light. You're not telling us anything we don't know, okay? She pisses me off. She she does. I'm not even... Because I don't know. Because I like Mike for some reason. He seems like he was like an alright guy. And I just feel bad that he got sucker gutted so bad by this girl. But anyways. Thank God he's not dead. We'll just say that, okay? So, um, yeah. Dahlia is talking so much shit about him. And then they bring in the hitman, Right? Now, I want you guys to pay attention because Dahlia, when he comes in and he claims that he doesn't know her, man, I bet her heart just swelled at that moment. I bet she thought like, oh yeah, my looks got me some, you know, a little further in life. Like, he's acting like he doesn't know me. He's never going to tell. This stranger's got loyalty towards me. And she jumps on that bandwagon right away, y'all. And she's like, oh, I don't know him either. Never seen him ever. Like, that's how she says it, ever. Y'all watch this. Okay, there's no more games with you and I. Now we're gonna get down to serious business. I wanna know if you know this guy. Come here, bring this guy in here. Get over here. Get. You know who this guy is? No. You've never seen him before? I've never seen him before, ever. Do you know her? Put your head up and look at her. Put your head up. I've never seen him. What were you doing coming out of her house? So then, after all of that, this is the grand finale. Y'all ready for this? Because this is funny. This is like the moment we've all been waiting for, right? Michael, the husband, in all of his alive glory, is about to walk in. You're going to jail today for solicitation of murder. You're under arrest. That's an undercover police officer. We filmed everything that you did, recorded everything that you did. You're going to jail for solicitation of first degree murder of your husband. I didn't do anything. Did you hear what I just told you? I heard what you said, but I didn't everything, do anything. Listen to me. Everything has been recorded. You were photographed in the convertible when you sat his car in the front of CVS. What do you want to do? What do you want to do here? I didn't Dying do anything. It. Listen to me. I didn't do anything. You're going to I jail. I didn't do anything. Please, I didn't do anything. Don't tell me you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail today. As soon as I'm done, oh my God. they're going to come in here and handcuff you and take you to the Palm Beach County Jail, book you for solicitation of first degree murder on your husband. Your husband is well and alive. Thank God. Oh yeah, thank Can God. I Can I see no, him? he doesn't want to see you. I'm so hard to see him. He doesn't want to see you. Please. You better quit your plan. Oh Listen to me. Oh my God. I want you to quit your acting and get this over with. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. Okay, you know what? You need a real good attorney. You need a real good attorney because we're going to show them the film where you say you're 5,000% sure you want him dead. You think I made that up? You think I made that up? It's exactly what's going to happen. I'm putting talk with you. When I leave this room, no other officer will ever talk to you again. The next time we see you is when you're in trial. Now you can make it right here 
or you're going to trial and you're going to do life in prison. You want to cooperate with us, whatever you want to do. It's over and done once I walk out. I'm not coming back in to talk to you. And no one else is either. What do you want to do before I leave here? Because the next officer comes here, he's going to handcuff you and take you to the jail. Can I see my husband, please? No, he doesn't want to see you. He doesn't want to see you. I'm leaving now. Can I have an officer come in here and cuff this? The person? I don't know what's going on, please. Can we go ahead and arrest her for it? Let's take your first degree murder. I don't see what's happening, please. Can you come stand up? Stand up, please. Dahlia is then granted her fraudulent wish and comes face to face with her husband. Oh my God! He's alive. Come here, please. Come here. Mike, come here. Come here, please. Come here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? I didn't do anything. I heard you. Mike, come here, please. Come here. Okay. Mike, we'll take her back to booking, please. Did you guys see how she was like demanding him to come? She's like, come here, Mike. Come here, Michael. Like, girl, do you not like know that you just tried to have me killed and you are demanding I come here? Like, on what earth does this girl think that any of this stuff that she's doing is okay? Like, on what planet, y'all? Please tell me. Oh, you guys. What if I got a little face left, eh? Hmm. Yeah, baby. Looks like I, the, the ring light's making me look like I got a little highlighter on. I did put a little blush on this morning. I didn't think it was there anymore, though. Okay, sorry. That was so inappropriate and insensitive. Okay, but nobody actually died here, so I don't even feel bad for Dolly. It's not insensitive towards her, but I'm just saying. I just, you know, noticed that, so sorry, guys. But anyways, let me fix my hair real quick. Okay, so I was blown away that this girl literally demanded this man to come over there like she's still in her little delusional world and she goes on her merry little way to jail okay so while she's in jail you guys again i'm not even going to tell you guys this part because i i can't even verbalize the emotions behind this i'm just going to play the tape but this is what she actually had the audacity to tell this man while she's sitting in the county jail. She was then taken to the Palm Beach Detention Center, professing her innocence the entire way. When she finally got to jail, she accepted the offer to make a phone call. Now, try and imagine yourself in her position. Now think of the absolute last person on planet Earth that you would call at that moment. Uh oh. <clears throat> yeah, what's up? Nothing, Mike. Can you please come here? Hey, listen, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to fight with you. Honestly. I can't help you. I don't you understand what just happened? What you're saying is not true. How is that possible? I think I'm sitting here. It's not true. It's not possible. You wouldn't even give me two minutes to talk to you, but it's not possible. What okay. you're saying is not true. How in the hell did I hear it and see it? I heard what you heard. It's not true. I heard what you heard and I saw what you saw. Everything they showed you, they showed me. How is it not, how are you telling me that? that I it's am not giving true? you my word that it's not true. <laughs> what, what do you, uh, Daddy, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. Mike, please, I need an attorney. Can you please help me? It's not it's true. Your, your brother was here and I spoke to him and he's going to go talk to your mom. I called them for you already, right? This is not true. I heard, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, how, how do you explain what I saw and heard? Like, I am limited on my phone call. You know more than anybody. It's not true. Just give me time so I can talk to you. What is, what is it to say? I saw it. I heard it. I saw what you saw and I heard what you heard. Okay, well, what, what, and what the f***? You said you wanted to have me killed. I heard that. What was not the problem? True. That is not true. How is true. it not true? How can you believe that? I heard your voice. How can you believe that? But it isn't the point. I heard you it's say it. It's not. I heard what you heard, and it's not. What did you? What did I hear then? I heard you say. I, I, I heard the tape. The 
Okay, I heard the tape and I saw pictures and I saw of the whole nine yards. I saw all of it. So why would you meet a guy in a parking lot? Explain that. I'm sitting here on the phone. I will tell you when I see you in person. Please. You're not, I can't come there anyway. I'm not allowed there. That's not true. Who said that? They tell you that on purpose. That's not true. Guy, I don't know what you could tell me. Even if, let's pretend, I said, oh, it's all better. I can't, they're charging your ass. Don't you get it? Like, I didn't do anything. Please. I don't know what to say to you. I can't help you. What do you mean you I, can't it's out of my hands. You're not even trying. What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to get me an attorney's face so I can talk to you. I, I saw you with this guy in the truck or whatever the f it was. I saw it. I heard your voice clearly. Well, I don't I understand. did not say those things. Period. So how did they get your voice on that tape recorder? Like, I'm limited with my time, please. You gotta be kidding me, man. Tell you, I heard you say that shit. Like, I'm, right? I'm telling you right now, okay? You, you can't fix it. How are you gonna tell me that you didn't say it, you didn't do it? When I saw you say it, and I, I saw you do it. Do you have any idea how I was when they told me what supposedly happened to you, how I got, and how I was, and how everything? Can you meet me in person so I can talk to you? No. Why? Why the f should I? Because you know me. I never, ever, 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 ever in my wildest dreams ever want that for you, ever. Well, you, you said it, Diane. You no, hired I did a guy. Not. No, I did not say anything, period. I didn't say anything. I don't know how you, you're going to actually have the nerve to sit here and lie to me now. Um, I can't help you even if I wanted to. Do you get it? Why don't you want to? It's out of my f***ing hand. You're not even trying. It's different if you're trying. You're not even trying. What, what could I possibly do for you? I don't get it. What could I do? You're not even trying. Trying what? I'm sitting here like a dumbass. Please. Okay, they're getting ready to like, take me again. Guys, I'm going to listen. I'm going to give you some advice and you need to listen. You're going to be ran around in there for a little while, a couple days. You need to just try and relax and just go with it. And keep to yourself and don't say a lot. Like, I love you. Don't do this to me. I'm sitting here. Everybody treated me awful, sir. I can't do anything to you. You know me. Everyone here seems awful to me. I can't Everybody. help you. I, I, there's nothing I can do to help you. you. Know what I'll do? You know what I'll do for you? Seriously? What? You sign my house back over to me. I'll help your mom immensely. Give me my house back. That's it. That's it what? I'll have the papers sent over to you somehow. You'll sign them over to me. And then I will help your mother. Okay? I'm not signing anything. I know you wouldn't sign anything. I knew that wasn't going to happen. So I can't help you. Okay? And that's what you're thinking you? about. I'm sitting here watching and you're thinking about... Yeah, they start having me kill him. I just offered to help you, and again, you have the balls to say no to me. You just basically said f*** you to me, which is hilarious considering your situation and considering what the f*** just happened today. All right? I have to go getting finger printed now. And the sad part is, like, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, but don't y'all think for a couple moments there he kind of sounded like he might have wanted to cave and help her like especially when he says things like oh well even if I wanted to help you like what do you want me to do like what do I need to do like he sounds like he's flip-flopping between being mad and like having disgust for Dahlia to maybe wanting to forgive her I, I don't know I just kind of get that vibe but you guys tell me what you think so even though Dahlia has had this ridiculous phone call with Mike it didn't end well, you know, and you guys can tell it didn't end well. So she proceeds to call her mom after because she's like, okay, if plan A is not going to work and Mike is not going to come through and help me out, then I need to call my next available resource, Stanley, Michael Stanley, the other one, the one that called and pretended to pose as an attorney and give that bogus legal advice, right? So she goes ahead and calls her mother and 
demands that her mother calls Michael Stanley, and this is the phone call with her mother, where she again is totally berating her husband, talking so much shit about him, and acting as if she's the victim in all of this when she single-handedly orchestrated every single thing that happened. It's astonishing. It's mind-blowing. Like, she's a special kind of fucked up. It's weird. But here it is. <laughs> it's not funny either. Hello? Mom, I'm in jail. I know, Dahlia. I know. I How find out. I need you to call Mike in New York. Okay, who do you want me to call? I need, what you, to call, I need you to call Mike in New York, please. I, I call already and I call that. Everybody knows. What is it you want me to do? Where are you exactly? I'm in the county jail. I need you to call. What did Mike say? Is he coming? Everybody's coming, Dahlia. We're going to go ahead and get your lawyer. Okay? Don't worry. Where are you? Are you in Gangwa? Yes, I'm here, Mom. Mike said this to me. Okay, Dahlia. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You didn't. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. Where are you? You in Gun Club? Yes, I'm here. I'm in Gun Club. And I heard Mike is at the house. I want him out of my house. Okay, well, but right now we're going to need to have a lawyer it's first. my okay? house. The title's okay. in my name. All right. Okay, don't worry about that right now. So Dahlia spent the next 20 months in jail before she went to trial in 2011. Now, if you guys are not sitting down like me, I want you to sit down right now because I cannot even begin to prepare you for what I am about to say. OK, it is so bogus and so ridiculous that I don't even know who thought of this defense, but I'm sure you guys know where I'm headed from the little clues I've told you. But nonetheless, I'm going to tell you. Dahlia's defense, okay, was that she and Michael wanted to be on reality TV so badly that this was all a hoax, a setup, and a scripted series of events that were orchestrated by producers of the cops show people that she had filming from YouTube and her and Michael. It was all a script. They were, you know, memorizing lines. They were acting all of this out. And this was all for the TV show Cops and for their YouTube channel. Okay. None of it was real. Michael agreed to it just as she did. And the only reason things went south is because when Michael signed his home over, he then quickly realized he did not want that anymore and he wanted his home back and she would not sign it back. So he became bitter and angry and enraged. And in order to get her out of the picture, he decided to turn this into reality. Now, as you guys no common sense this this doesn't even fly this doesn't even in any kind of world make sense because michael had no idea what the hell was going on until the moment police knocked on his door and said hey buddy your wife's trying to kill you get out the house we need to go and set this up right but dahlia is saying that all of this including the boynton beach police department all of this was just part of the cops show and it was all scripted and Michael knew about it and she knew about it and everybody knew about it. Now, I don't know what's more astonishing, the fact that this defense actually was presented or the fact that it actually confused a few people enough to where they couldn't make a decision. OK, now the jury did find her guilty of solicitation to first degree murder, but her conviction was thrown out and it was set for another trial date based on a technicality. Now, before the conviction was thrown out, Dahlia was sentenced to 20 years in prison, okay? Now, unfortunately, when she got back to the jail and was waiting to be transported, to prison that is when the conviction was thrown out and the court set another trial date okay but at this time dahlia had somehow well i'm not gonna say somehow i'm just gonna put this out there it's pretty common knowledge and it's pretty much out there that she was um sleeping with her attorney okay 
She was sleeping with her attorney. She was giving him that good slow Becky and she was doing the darn thing. And I mean, hey, you gotta pay the attorney bill, I guess is what she was thinking. But whatever it is, the attorney somehow got her a bond, okay? So that she wouldn't have to sit in the county jail for another 20 months or however long until the new trial. So when she bonded out, the attorney was able to have the case continued, get this, for eight years. Eight mother freaking years. I don't even think OJ Simpson was able to make a court pass the case. And when I say continue or pass the case, every time you go to court, you can say, hey, we need a 30 day continuance. Hey, we're gonna continue this for 30 more days, da 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 da. And usually that's why people sit in the county jail for so long because you have to give an allotted and reasonable amount of time for both the defense and the prosecution to get their evidence in order, review the other side's evidence and just put everything together. But eight years for something so cut and dry is ridiculous. And if you wanna go with this murder for hire plot, that's all fine and good, but like how much research do you need to do on that? Because I'm quite sure it's not eight freaking years, y'all. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's eight years. It's not much to find. It's all on tape. Every bit of this case is on tape. There's nothing to investigate. Not eight years worth. Nonetheless, this lady, Dahlia, was on house arrest for eight years. She, had, she was sleeping with the attorney. She found a new man, got married to him, got divorced from Mike, had a baby, she had a whole freaking life in the eight years. So, here we go. Next part of this whole ridiculous circus show. Now, let me tell you guys this. The reason I said eight years is because there was two trials in those eight years, okay? The first one was after six years. So, after the technicality happened and that, you know, trial and conviction was thrown out, six years later, she went to trial again. But because it was so freaking confusing with the reality TV show and was it true and was it not because, you know, people just didn't really know. The jury couldn't figure it out. It ended in a mistrial with a hung jury. That is how much they confused them with this reality TV thing and this cops show and YouTube and all of that. So they went ahead and... It was a mistrial, and right after that, she went to trial again, but that lasted another two years. So it was a total of eight years and two trials that she was out on house arrest with an ankle monitor, but free. So finally, you guys, in 2017, Dahlia is found guilty during her third and final trial, okay? Now, she is found guilty, but instead of the 20 years that she was originally given, she is sentenced to 16 with credit for time served on the ankle monitor. In what freaking world does this happen? Like, why couldn't I get some deal like this? You serve half of your time out free on an ankle. I don't care if you're on house arrest. You are free. Okay, you're free. You had a baby and got married and got divorced. You bought a house, did a book deal, been on every ABC News and 48 hours in the world. And you have lived life. You're now going to prison and you're sentenced for 16 years with eight years time served. Eight, almost nine years time served. So you have about seven years left to do. And with gain time, which is the time that you can accrue for good behavior, you only serve 85% in the state of Florida, which, okay, let's, let's be real and let's be fair here, okay? Nobody died, nobody got hurt. However, it's only because the hitman was an undercover narcotics cop. And it's not for any other reason. Um, I don't know that this girl can ever be rehabilitated. I don't really know what's fair here, to be honest with you. I'm not upset that she's only like serving six years because, I mean, nobody really got hurt. But like, I also just think that she scammed and skated in this whole situation. Like, I don't know if a lengthy amount of time would have been the right punishment for someone with her mentality. I don't even know what the right punishment would be for somebody like her. But I can assure you that 
she is not doing anything different in prison than she did out here. She's still milking pen pals and sugar daddies, which if you haven't seen my video on that, it's the one right before this. It's the one that says prison pen pals. If you watch how those girls hook and drain those men, that is what she's doing right now. She hooked the freaking attorney and got him to do all this stuff for her and make sure she stayed out for all these freaking years. You know, she hooked and baited Mike and got her, you know, almost got his condo. It's like she knows how to finesse and manipulate situations. And she's still doing that very much in prison with pen pals, with officers, with inmates. The only difference in prison, and the reason I said in the beginning of the video that I did not recognize her as I walked by her every day, is because in prison, she has changed her appearance very much. She is much more homely and wholesome looking. Um, she doesn't wear any kind of fitted clothes in there. She doesn't really do her hair. She wears glasses. She's just got more of an innocent, little house on the prairie look going on. I'm not sure why, because her and I were not close friends, but I can assure you there's a motive behind that. There is some kind of method to that madness because that girl that we saw in all these videos is not the girl walking around in prison at all. I don't know what she's got up her sleeve, but it's something, I promise y'all. So anyways, um, as far as that goes, I don't know her in prison to be um, suffering or without. I think she gets money. Um, I don't know her well, so I can't speak a lot on her personally, and I'm not going to just make stuff up, but I just will tell you this. I know that she's living pretty comfortably because you can tell when people are, you know, they're clean and put together. Um, you can definitely tell that she is getting some sort of income from somewhere, which I don't think is her family, just judging on the research that I did. And as far as the way I see her interact with other inmates and staff, it's still in that same flirtatious, manipulative, what can I suck out of you type of thing. But yeah, I can just tell you that I know for certain that she's doing the pen pal thing and she's definitely either already hooked or is definitely trying to hook some staff in there. Um, she does have a girlfriend, and I don't know much about their relationship, but I know she does have a companion in there. And that's pretty much it, you know, besides looking like a little house on the prairie type of chick. You know, there's not much else I can say about her. She's not a troublemaker. Um, I believe she works in a pretty decent job. I think she was working in the kitchen at some point in time. I believe maybe now she's in education. But nonetheless, um... That is the story of Dahlia DiPolito and Michael DiPolito. Let me know what you guys think. I would really love to know if you guys think that her entire trial was as crazy as I did. Like, this defense was, it was, it was actually genius, okay? It was actually genius. Um, but holy shit, like, wow. Okay, so and then the being out on house arrest for eight years and being able to get that credited to her sentence and her prison time. Um, I don't know, man. The whole thing was just was that it was out there. It was out there. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys liked this story. If you liked the video up to this point, please, please give me a thumbs up right here down below. It means way more than you know, and it pushes my video out there even more so so that people can see it. Um, and if you are here for the first time and you liked me, if you subscribe, I hope you continue to enjoy the videos and I appreciate that greatly. You can turn the little notification bell on and the hopefully YouTube um, app will notify you with a little message when there's a new video up on my channel. I'm having a little trouble like putting them up on a specific day because of my job and stuff because like I never know when I'm going to have the time. So I just, I try to make sure I do one a week, but sometimes it comes out on Monday. Sometimes it comes out on Wednesday. Sometimes it comes out on Saturday. So I will get better with that over time when I can actually start making this more of like a part-time job and not just a hobby. But until I get to a thousand subscribers and make some kind of income from the Google um, commercials, like I really can't sit down and do this the way I want to. So um, yeah, if you guys 
turn the little notification bell on, you will be notified when there's a video, but um, just know that every week at some point there will be one up. So thank you guys so much for encouraging, for supporting, for all the thumbs up and subscriptions. And I love y'all. And when I say that, I'm not just saying it because it's the cliche thing to say like on YouTube at the end, like, oh, I love y'all so much. Like, no, I love y'all. Not personally because I don't know some of you, but I love you guys. And it's more of an appreciation love. Like it's an appreciation for helping me help myself. Like I appreciate y'all and that is not a lie. And that that reflects the love aspect that I have when I say I love y'all and I mean it, okay? So thank you guys. I will see y'all in my next video and I will try to do my little spin right here. I don't know if it's gonna work. So see y'all in my next one. And I'm back spinning. <laughs> Ooh, that was an ugly laugh.